Hey guys, this is my Tesla Model 3 which I have owned for the last 365 days. Today marks the one year anniversary of this car and that is the reason why we are off the studio on location at a relatively scenic location in Singapore and this is the Sinita Aerospace Heights. So one of the questions that people ask me when they know that I'm driving an EV in Singapore is what is the range on this car? Now, Tesla advertises the Model 3 to go about 613 kilometers. I'm driving the Cat B model. I would say that 613 kilometers as advertised by Tesla is probably not very realistic. I'm a pretty mild driver and I would say that I'm able to at max extract about 440 kilometers of range from this car. Realistically, you should plan for about 400 kilometers and I'm already a very mild driver. The next thing that people want to ask is where do you charge and how much does it cost to charge? Are you actually saving money over driving a petrol car? And I would say that it is possible to save money, but it really depends on your usage pattern and whether you have access to the Tesla destination chargers, which are free to charge into your lifestyle. Otherwise, at the supercharger, you're paying 65 cents per kilowatt hour of charge. So to address that, let's get out of the slight drizzle on a Saturday morning and go to a supercharger where I will take you into details about how much it costs to charge before you decide to buy an EV in Singapore. So we have waterway point right in front of us. There's a Tesla supercharger station within this mall itself in the basement car park. So in general, most of the parking lots in Singapore, most of the car parks in Singapore will have EV charging lots unless it's a very old car park. Most of the HDB, the public housing car parks in Singapore will have some degree of charging, whether is it fast or slow charging. Slow charging is actually still more prevalent within Singapore, but right here we have the Tesla supercharger and we are driving right down into it to discuss further on the charging. So charging a Tesla is actually very easy. Once you get to a supercharger, all you need to do is to walk right up to the supercharger. And here we are, this is the supercharger store. And if you pick out the handle right here, okay, all you need to do is to press the button right here and the charge port will open plug it in and that's it and it will start charging there's no need to log in there's no need to set which station you're at it communicates with the supercharger network and it will charge your card so right now we are at 67 percent eight minutes remaining oh my god so the charging speed is actually very very fast okay so the price here is 64 cents singapore cents and it will actually clock up there are other fees that will apply but otherwise Look at the speed here, right? It's charging at 68 kilowatts and adding 460 kilometers per hour of charge. So far, since we started recording and plugged in, it's barely been a minute and it has put in one kilowatt hour. The battery capacity for this car is 60 kilowatt hour. And I would say that safely, we should be done in another, well, it says here seven minutes but maybe because the charge limit is 80%, I can increase the charge limit a little bit further to 100%, and there you go, 25 minutes from 69% to 100%. Usually it slows down after 80%, but my charging patterns, I like to charge it to 100% wherever possible. So we're done charging and let's head back to the studio where I will go through with you my charging statistics that I've gathered over the last one year and tell you a little bit more about the ownership of EV and whether it is actually convenient and whether it's suitable for you in Singapore. So does owning an EV in Singapore make sense? Now, an EV, they are usually powerful and they have instant acceleration. So the driving experience is top notch. If the driving experience is what you're after, then you will get what you want driving an EV. But if you are talking about savings, right, not having to pump petrol because petrol is expensive and you're trying to convince your other half that moving to an EV will help you save money, then forget it because it is not going to help you save money. And let me go through that. Now, I've collected a whole year of data right here. Now, in the year of ownership that I've had the Tesla Model 3, I drove 15,000 kilometers. I would have charged 1,800 kilowatt hour. And based on my driving style, I would have spent 0. 
0.122 kilowatt hour per kilometer that is traveled. And each kilowatt hour will cost 65 cents. So the whole year of charging to travel the 15,000 kilometers that I have covered, it would have cost me $1,170. Now to do the same in a relatively efficient petrol car, let's say maybe the Altis or the Honda Fit, Honda Jazz, um, you may get about 15 kilometers out of each liter of petrol. So to cover 15,000 kilometers, you will need about 1,000 liters of petrol. At $2.90 per liter of petrol for RON95 petrol, it will cost you 2,900 to cover the same distance. Now compare that with the $1,000 $1,170, you're going to spend charging the car, you will think that, wow, that's not too bad. You are saving about $1,700 in terms of petrol. But we're missing a point here. And the point is insurance. So insurance for EV cars are higher. So the Altis will probably set you back about $750 for insurance. And the insurance on my Tesla Model 3 is actually much higher. Double of that actually at about $1,005. Road tax is also higher. So Singapore government charges road tax, additional road tax for EVs. And because the car is that powerful, the road tax annually is about $2,000. So the total of insurance and road tax is $3,500 for the Tesla Model 3. And if you add the Altis road tax and insurance together, annually it's going to cost you $1,500. So the additional cost of owning the EV is $2,000 more, $3,500 versus $1,500. So there are other savings, I'm very sure, right? Your brake pads, they don't wear out that much. There's less maintenance because there's no engine oil to change and all. The EVs will have its own problems later. What if your battery dies? What if your motor dies? Those things are expensive to replace. Unless, of course, it's covered by warranty, but your ICE car will also have its own warranty terms. So summary of this is that if you are out for money savings because you want to switch from petrol to EV and you don't have to pump petrol, which is expensive, then the argument doesn't really work. Not in Singapore. Now, there are a few factors that has made it work for me, right? Because I have access to destination charges. Tesla destination charges, they are free to use, right? But there are limited lots at limited locations around Singapore. Now, I happen to visit Millennia Walk quite a bit because there's a gym there and I use the gym almost every weekday. So when I go to the gym and I spend that one, two hours in the gym and another hour for dinner, I actually can charge the car. And destination charges are slow charger. They're not superchargers. Superchargers, I've shown you, they charge very fast. Destination charger is very, very slow. It may take about five, six hours for a full charge. I don't have to charge full most of the time because I'm there at the gym every day. So when there's a lot, I'll charge it. If there are no lots, I'll wait. And my mileage is low enough that I don't have to charge the car on a daily basis or every other day, right? So based on my usage pattern, which is a low 15,000 kilometers per year, and the fact that I have access to free charging, it actually lowers the total cost of ownership. Now, another way that you can make this work for you is if you stay in landed property because electricity at home is charged at about 30 cents, 31 cents per kilowatt hour. So if you're using that source, right, the electricity from your home to charge your car, then it lowers. It's no longer 65 cents per kilowatt hour. It's just now 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So it will increase the amount of savings that you have and that will cover for the increase in the road tax and the insurance. So there are very specific use cases where it will work for you. But if you are just out for cost savings, don't buy into the idea that EVs will help you save money in the long run because petrol is expensive and electricity is cheap. It is not the case, right? Not to mention that the last point of having to charge EVs. Now, when you drive an ICE car, when you drive a petrol car, you pump the petrol once and you don't really think about it until quite a while later, right? Maybe the petrol, the tank of petrol will last you one, two weeks, depending on your mileage. For me, I use used to pump maybe once every three weeks in my older car and I don't have to think much about it, right? Right now, every time I park, every time I drive my EV, I'm constantly having to monitor the percentage of charge, the state of charge. And I keep thinking about having to charge the car. And even when you're charging the car, you've got to think about whether it is going to hit the charge limit soon and you have to move the car. Otherwise, you'll be charged either fees. So a lot of other factors involved. And if you are willing and able to do the mental gymnastics of having to handle that overhang of that the burden of having to charge the car all the time, then sure, it will work for you. If you enjoy the car, 
Yes, of course, an EV will work for you. But if you are just out for cost savings, don't buy into an idea. Don't get tricked into it. So driving an EV is not for everybody. It really depends on your driving patterns, on your, your habits, on your lifestyle, right? So it has worked for me. It may not work for you. So make a wise choice. I hope this video has helped you to some extent. So I'll see you in one of my other videos.